on to round two, in which you get to stay in your seats. <laughs> All right, the Elections Committee are co-sponsors, and you, our audience members, will have a chance to ask specific questions in this round to specific candidates. We're starting out with the Elections Committee, which has prepared a list of questions that are follow-ups to candidates' questionnaires or interviews that they have already received, and will even quote the candidate's specific response on occasion. Audience members can tweet questions to at Main Lee to follow up on questions from the intro round. All right, starting with you, Mr. Pollard. The Maine People's Alliance asks, will you vote to allow the Bush tax credits to expire, at least for those making over $250,000 a year, and promise not to vote in favor of future tax cuts for the wealthy? I, uh... I will vote to allow the tax cuts to expire. Um, I will not promise, and the wording was to ever Promise not to vote in favor of future tax cuts yeah. for the wealthy. I, I will not make that promise. I, I don't think it's likely that I would vote in favor of tax cuts, but I, I do believe as a federalist that we should be shifting our emphasis of government from the central government in Washington, D.C. to state and local governments, and I, I think if that ends up with an overall redu reduction in the federal tax burden upon individuals and a, and a comparable increase in the state tax burden, that is something that I would consider supporting. I think a lot of things function better devolved to the state and local communities. Um, but I do think we are dealing with a tax system that's deeply unfair, and the wealthiest individuals um, benefit the most from it. Um, and I think it's just, it's really very disturbing the, the figures on Mitt Romney's income and, and the percentage uh, of income tax that he paid. We need to address this. The wealthiest members of society benefited the most from the economic prosperity. They, those are the members of society who I believe should be held responsible for paying down the deficit. Good. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Um, Mr. Dunlap, next is for you. The Southern Maine Workers Center wants to ask, the Obama administration is currently negotiating a Trans-Pacific Free Trade Agreement, also called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. This trade agreement would be like NAFTA for the Pacific Rim and has the potential to open up free trade with dozens of countries. What labor and economic justice provisions would you want to see included in a future trade deal? So this has been the biggest problem that's faced working families in America America today are all the trade agreements that we have had since NAFTA and even some before NAFTA. We have seen so much of our manufacturing go overseas uh, following the good paying jobs that are now no longer good paying jobs, especially around the Pacific Rim. The specific things that I would like to see in any type of a trade agreement that we would engage in with another country or group of countries would have to include things like specific uh, worker protections, specific environmental protections, and also uh, protections for the businesses that would be impacted here in the United States, uh, especially those, uh, those industries that would be otherwise in direct competition with those countries uh, in the manufacturing sector, producing certain goods and services that would otherwise be produced here in the United States. So I think that would be just at the very high, highest level of things that we'd have to have in short in any type of a trade agreement that we're not just simply taking an American workforce and sending it overseas so that it could be working for much, much lower pay and under much less restrictive environmental and other protections <coughs> that would simply hurt, that would hurt us in the long run. Okay, well, thank you. Um, next question is for candidate uh, Cynthia Dill. The University Neighborhood Association would like to know, if the Supreme Court strikes down President Obama's health care law, will you push to have Medicare cover all people as a single payer program? I certainly believe that we need universal health care. I think every American needs to have the security of knowing that if a health issue confronts them, that they can get treatment. And in the, um, in, I'm just shocked that uh, America has such a poorly managed health care system that incentivizes uh, people to prolong treatment and has a fee-for-service uh, model that really just um, kind of creates a system that leads to more treatment, um, more tests, and not treating someone holistically. Whether or not Medicare is the single-payer 
health program that would be beneficial, I'm not sure, but I certainly would study it. I truly hope that this does not find the Affordable Care Act unconstitutional. Um, but if it, if it does, then I will um, pour a lot of energy into finding a solution and an alternative because it's clearly one of the most important issues facing this country. Thank you. And uh, next for candidate uh, John King. Nancy from the Bicycle Coalition of Maine has contributed this question. The price of gas is over $4 a gallon, and transportation costs add up to the highest percentage of household income in 50 years. Transportation infrastructure is in bad shape. What strategies will you use to rebuild our transportation system so that it is sustainable, healthy, and accommodating to all modes? Well, I've, I've already talked about the, um, the budget challenge that the country faces. Uh, we are going to have to do what might appear to be almost impossible right now. Um, we need to face the problem of the deficit. We need to uh, approach uh, much fairer taxation. Uh, it is going to involve budget cuts as well. But I don't think those budget cuts should be focused on infrastructure. That is one of the areas where government can invest and make it work, make the economy work better for the private sector and for all of us. Uh, I would hope that uh, the fact that the investments have been lagging for years might be an opportunity for us, that we can build an, an infrastructure that works for a modern economy. And uh, it would include discovering some of the things we do better in an earlier age uh, in the United States, uh, train travel, and, uh, and also uh, making uh, our cities and uh, rural areas bicycle friendly. Um, I observe who the question came from, and I support the efforts that the uh, Bicycle Coalition does, and, uh, and I appreciate that that's a place that's going to have to get investment. It just has to be a priority. Thank you, John Hayes. 